Okay, we started with our diagram. We identified the forces, and uh, the forces were all either vertical forces or horizontal forces. Well, except maybe this one has vertical and horizontal components. And uh, that was fairly straightforward for the uh, horizontal and vertical force equations. But our torque equations required us to find perpendicular components to L. I'm not going to show it here, but other students might want to just keep the force and identify just the perpendicular components of the lever arm. Some will argue, especially for this force and that force, that that would have been easier. But maybe not for that one. Anyway, I'm comfortable with what's happened so far. Uh, let's continue to develop our torque equation. Let's ask ourselves, what is this perpendicular component of the weight? The perpendicular component of the weight, this is the adjacent side to this known angle. So it is cos theta, whatever this red theta is, times the weight itself, uh, because it's the adjacent component to the angle theta. I'm going to put theta here. In my, um, in my problem it was 60 degrees. You might, it might have um, a different value for yours, I'm not sure. Uh, times that length, so cos theta times uh, w times 0.3 8, 5 of the full length minus now this tension perpendicular will have exactly the same geometric has exactly the same geometric relationship it's cos theta times this tension which is the hypotenuse of this uh, times the full length plus well, this perpendicular component here, well, let's be careful with this. If that's theta, that's an equal and opposite angle. So this is theta. And if that's theta, then that is actually 90 minus theta in there. And um, it wouldn't take much to realize that makes this angle theta. And that angle there is 90 minus theta. Uh, so if I'm going to say this angle here, I'm going to put a, a line is actually based on, uh, is actually 90 degrees minus theta. So if I recognize, so I realize that this T perpendicular, I can even, I can think of it as opposite of theta and call this, uh, uh, T sine theta, or I can call it adjacent to this orange angle, uh, and I can call this T cos 90 minus theta. Uh, so I'm going to say it's the latter. I'm going to call T perpendicular of the guy wire uh, equal to the tension on the guy wire, which is the hypotenuse, and I'm going to call that cos of 90 degrees minus theta, which is equal to sine of theta, if I wanted to use uh, just theta. Uh, uh, theta is 60 degrees in mine. It, it might be different in yours. Because this is, this is a smaller angle then. All right, so I now know um, I can use this last equation Let's see, what do, what do I know and not know? Oh, and this is the tension in the guy wire. This is the tension for the load. Uh, these two are negative. This one is positive. So in other words, the weight, the weight of the boom twisting itself, the weight of this load twisting uh, the boom, are both being countered by the, just the guy wire holding it back. Otherwise, this, this whole 
boom, would just flop and twist down to the earth. So those are balanced. Those are in balance. Uh, these are, this is negative S negative. I can bring it over. So I have a cos theta times this uh, weight here. Oh, no, that's this weight. Uh, times 0 0.385 times the length. Uh, plus this cos theta tension here in the wire at the full length acting. And both of those equal to the tension in the guy wire cos 90 degrees minus theta times the full length of the guy wire. So this one works closer in. It has less torque than you might expect given its weight. Uh, both of these forces are torquing way out at the end of the boom. Uh, but what's interesting here, so these have equal each other. And length is in all terms. Length is a common factor, which I can cancel out. I can divide left and right by the length. The length is on both sides in all terms, so I can just divide by L. Uh, let's see, I think this is, this is enough right here. I know the angle, check. I didn't know the length, it's gone, check. Uh, tension in the guy wire is what I need to know. Tension in this wire, I know because it's holding up this weight, check. Angle, check. Uh, this weight, I'm given the weight of the boom, check, I know this angle, check. You can use the torque equation to solve for the tension in the guy wire. Alright, that will give you part A. I think everything else will fall into place uh, quicker. Uh, part B, find the horizontal component of the force. Uh, this, this is Fx. Well, Fx is, e once you find the tension in the guy wire, you can quickly find F of X, which is the horizontal component. Remember, its direction is going to be equal and opposite. Um, that's the horizontal force component. Um, I, I, now, and then find the vertical force component uh, on the boom at its lower end. So you want to find F of Y. As soon as you... I think you can find f of y right now. It's equal to that tension plus this weight. And um, it's pushing back on both of those. So you, you can find, so that's part. So you can use uh, part b is answered here. Part c is answered here in short order. Okay, just think about what we did here. Uh, setting up diagram, identifying the object, identifying all of the forces. Forces were at points of contact, otherwise the weight. And then uh, we identified this as the lever arm, from this is the pivot point, and then we identified the forces that cause torque, which is just the perpendicular components of each of these forces actually cause any torque. And these forces here, the pivot point, cause no torque at all because L is equal to zero there.